One of the hardest things about a man losing his spouse of many, many, many years, literally as long as siblings or other people he knows have been married for almost 20 years, is that that prayer that brought in that woman who was supposed to replace the one that was timing out didn't get fully answered because of the girlfriends and guy friends she had around herself. You see, when a man sees a woman, he sees her individually. He doesn't see her all the time with the social relationships or social constructs or social business she has about her. The difference between me and the man she's chosen is significant. It's not just the fact that I'm shorter. It's not the fact that I'm lighter. It's the fact that I love her enough to flourish, to fly on angel's wings for the Lord's house. The problem in her is that she's not willing to see the love she has for me. And the problem in other people around me is that they didn't want her for me. And openly, her pastor interfered in a way that was immoral. He didn't know me, and he didn't have the right to school her in some way. I will be going for that pastor, and I will make him pay financially for his attack on my life. At the same time, I will go after his pastoralship to make sure he's disbarred or just whatever it is to get him out of that work. But I have the right not to retaliate to school a man who thought he had the right to interfere with the Lord's plan. When you interfere with the Lord's plan, you ruin and manipulate and destroy a life. But are you doing that because you're too afraid to acknowledge you're in love with a man who you didn't expect to be the one of your life. You see, God teaches lessons like that marvelously. He literally says, oh, you like that tall, dark, and handsome type. Good for you. But I don't, because he's not in the Lord's house, and he will abuse you. The love of your life that you think is the one coming in might just be a profiling man who knows how to play with you. The truth is, my dear, I knew how to play with you after a situation we had in Panera. The minute you leaned into me, I recognized the play. But I didn't mind that day because of my love of you and how it was growing and flourishing in every way. The way that the Lord wanted it to, the way that the Lord planned it to, the way that my prayer allowed it to. But here's the deal. Despite the fact I recognized what I could do to win, I chose not to because I'm a man who wants to be chosen again and again for his soul. My Japanese wife chose me out of all the men in that nation instead of a Japanese man. She did that out of the love she felt for me. The love that I had for her, the love that I had for our child, flourished through our lives. It's true, we had a difficult child, we had a wayward boy, but there was Americans around him that were interfering all the time with our parenting. And that was immoral on their lives before the Lord. So those parents and those children will be standing before God and they'll be questioned about that time and then that place of what did they think they were motherfucking doing. But in the case of the woman of my life, the love of my life, it might not have been my late Japanese wife. It might have been the one that was to come, the one that God planned for me. And there was two, not just one. You see, I prayed two prayers in that month or two and I got both of my prayers answered because my prayers were on my knees, my prayers were in my tears, and my prayers continue to be heard by the Lord's house. The woman I love wants to play sheriff on people's lives, but she's going to learn the hard way that her vanity and her vice, her need for drama, is not pleasing to the Lord in any way. So if you're planning to come, my love, be prepared for real love, but don't come to play. Because I have an ability that you launched, but it is owned by the Lord's house and never by you in any way.